All right, people, some crazy stuff just went down the other day. Uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, who is a Breitbart writer and alt-light celebrity, tried to do a talk at University of Cal California, Berkeley, and then this happened. Fox News alert, massive protests and rioting have erupted at the University of California at Berkeley. Demonstrators have forced the cancellation of a speech by Breitbart News's Milo Yiannopoulos. Demonstrators have set fires, they burn vehicles, they launch fireworks at the building through rocks trying to breach the doors. Now, Milo is not a Nazi. He's uh, not in the alt-right, apparently. His views are really, in my opinion, moderate. I mean, he's an anti-establishment moderate, but not that anti-establishment because he recently got a book deal from Simon & Schuster for $250,000. So if you're getting massive book deals from one of the biggest publishing companies in the United States, you're not that extreme. And I'm not insulting him for being more mainstream, but the fact that that happened Riots happen because of him, a moderate, and he's very left on some views, especially concerning gay marriage, shows how far the left has gone to just shut everything down. And it's gotten so bad that, look, they're, they're beating people with, with poles. They beat a defenseless white blonde girl upside the head with a pole. Take a look. I mean, that's that's crazy. I mean, what what has she done? She's she's standing there and they're beating her. And you can see from the uh, the, the photos that they came out with the intent to really breed chaos, to attack people, cause property damage. You know, here you're seeing a sign that's uh, this is war uh, become ungovernable. Let's light fires and destroy property. Yeah, let's throw things through windows and Starbucks which actually supports them because the CEO of Starbucks, Howard Schultz, is now is told unemployed black people and anyone else in the USA to fuck off because we're going to hire 10,000 refugees. He's on their side, but they wreck his businesses. Um, you know, it's just really crazy. It's crazy. It's like we're seeing a Ukrainian Maidan protest action and oh what a surprise that george soros who was behind the ukrainian maidan um uprising coup is also behind all these leftist groups from the women's march during the inauguration to the antifa who should be called antifaggots because they are faggots um they're basically larping but they get establishment help they're getting organization and funding to put on a black mask outnumber someone 100 to 1, and just attack. So Milo, he canceled, of course, and he had to be extracted in some crazy uh, Navy SEAL operation. You know, Army Rangers had a fly-in with a uh, you know helicopter and rope. Or I, I am exaggerating, but they really had to get them out there because you saw these people. They came out to hurt people, and they did hurt, hurt, hurt people. But it turns out that the progressive left, the social justice left, the feminist Black Lives Matter, Antifa left, the hard left, which has become so utterly antithetical to free speech in the last few years, um, is taking a turn post-Trump selection where they simply will not allow any speaker on campus, even somebody as silly and harmless and gay as me. And Milo makes a good point that, you know, it's now about anyone who disagrees with me, anyone who is one centimeter to the right of me must be attacked. It's not must be debated, must be argued with, must be attacked, must be shut down. Here they have, uh, take a look at this, when some woman was giving an interview with a news organization and she gets pepper sprayed up in the face. They just pepper sprayed her. I mean, she was, I mean, her only crime, I guess you can say, is she was wearing a red MAGA hat. But look, I don't want to blame the victim. You have a right to wear whatever clothing that you want. I mean, do we really need to start teaching women counter-terrorist public safety uh, tips, you know? I mean, I guess that would be, we've been teaching men for many years to how not to rape 
I don't know. Now we have to teach women how not to get knocked upside the head with a pole by a leftist, how not to get pepper sprayed in the face by an antifag. And in really sad news, everyone, some of these antifags were run over by a car. <laughs> Take a look. <laughs> Oh, I feel so bad for them. You know, obviously, though, the driver, his life was at in, in danger. They're banging on the car, hitting it with poles. If I was in that car, it's either I hit that gas and run over whoever is in front of me, or maybe I'll die. So I, I'm pretty sure they're not going to charge him with running people over, antifags over. I mean, there should be, I wonder if... Um, you know, there's going to be a law and exemption from God Emperor Trump that running over antifags will be a justifiable act. A commenter made the astute observation that we've gone from, oh, you know, it's OK to punch Nazis like Richard Spencer. He's a white nationalist to now hitting women, hitting women and spraying them in the face with caustic substances. And there you can see the intent all along was not to punch Nazis, to punish Nazis, because guess what? Anyone can be classified as a Nazi. It's an opinion. It's a subjective opinion to label someone a Nazi. So I can label anyone a Nazi and then punch them. And then justifiably, I'll have all the liberal whore, the media, and all of the Hollywood losers saying, you know, it's okay because Nazis are bad and we fought against the Nazis when they're doing the actual behavior that Nazis did. Now, you're probably expecting there to be dozens of arrests that police were cracking skulls. Nope, there was hardly, I don't think there even was, was one. Maybe I heard of one or two, but I wonder why that there wasn't. Let's take a look at the police chief of UC, UC Berkeley. Okay, so she looks like she could be an antifaggot herself. Put on a black mask on this woman, and I use that term loosely, put a black mask on her head, and honestly, you couldn't probably tell the difference between some of her and the antifags that were already out there. Appearance is ideology, people. Uh, you just have to look at someone, and you know exactly what they think. You know what they believe in. I mean, this woman probably stood and watched and smiled, smiled at the chaos that was going on, because ideologically, she probably agrees with all the stuff that the antifagots were doing out there. And did she put out a statement? Did she say that they're investigating people who were assaulted? Nothing. She put nothing out. She is enabling them. Her job is law and order to shut that down. To If someone is breaking the law, if someone is threatening public safety, to shut it down, to stop them. But she did nothing. I mean, she should be tried. She should be tried for, you know, going against the oath that she had to swear as a police officer because she didn't do her duty. And of course, the media comes out to downplay this. Here, the Washington Post shows a picture of a raging inferno, something that maybe Berkeley, the campus, hasn't seen in decades. And do you, you know what they call it? Intense protest. Intense protest? So now, I guess the Washington Post is going to relabel a lot of other acts. Rape is now intense sex. It's not rape anymore. And murder is intense touching. So this is the Washington Post, and let's see what New York Mag, they take the victim-blaming angle. It's Milo's fault. He's a troll. He's in the alt-right. And the, student, the students didn't riot. They protested, which we saw uh, hitting people upside the head with poles. I, I think that is past the stage of protest. And here we have the New York Times. They, again, they start off by basically victim blaming as well, calling Milo a divisive right wing writer, which, but as I already said, he's not that right wing. He's anti Islam, anti feminism, but culturally speaking, overall, he's a moderate, maybe slightly right of center. Um, they call the rioters demonstrators. And they had to use the violent demonstration in quotes. And that's a media trick. They use that on me, too, where they would say pro-rape advocate, you know, so they use quotes to have plausible deniability that it's not true. And here you have the San Francisco gay or gate say that uh, it's 
Berkeley erupts in protests, when they're showing flames and fire, is it really a protest? If I go there with a hundred Jim Bros right now, big dudes, and we start lighting fires and bashing people with poles, do you think they're going to call Roosh is a protester? They're going to say, I'm, I am a, a terrorist. And it's not because I look like one with this amazing beard, but, but come on, you know, smashing people with pipes and uh, I, there's a lot more video that you can find where the violence, people were laid out. People were knocked unconscious on the street. And here you have the media, the fake news, that's what they are, fake news, calling this protest. And then what do we have after that? We have Hollywood. Hollywood, people who are intelligent and they study history and they're just so, they're so well-reasoned people and there's such a balance of ideology within Hollywood. You got a lot of people on the right, a lot of people on the left, right? No, they're all on the left. They are the most extreme left people. And I mean, we know who Hollywood is run by. I'll say, I'll say that much. But let's take a look at Judd Apatow, a really ugly man. And he says, this is just the beginning. When will all the fools who are still supporting Trump realize what is at stake? Yeah, violence. That's what we're about. We're Hollywood. We're about violence. Let's see what Deborah Messing, who is some washed up actress. Uh, I, I don't even know what show she's in now. Resistance works. Resist. Never stop. Yeah, Bash people on the head, knock them unconscious, kill them, kill them because Trump is bad. Trump is a horrible person because he kills people. And then you have Sarah Silverman, whose ovaries, unfortunately, were long ago emptied and there is no life coming out of her. She says, wake up and join the resistance. Once the military is with us, fascists get overthrown. Mad King and his handlers go bye bye. Heart, heart, heart. She is making a Game of Thrones reference right here. And have you noticed that people on the left, their whole worldview is shaped by movies, Star Wars, Hunger Games, Harry Potter, because they don't know history. They don't know, they don't know history. So the only comparison to their resistance, which is subversion, which is sed sedition, is to compare it to Hollywood films. So there's one thing that is clear now, as, as you can see this now, this is an attack against a gay man, Jewish man, who I believe is a moderate and he is, you know, charming. He he's a good, good speaker. He has good ideas, but he's not a Nazi. He's not a white supremacist. He's not a fascist. Uh, I don't even consider him on the right. Not like me. I'm ready to bring back tradition and patriarchy and remove the woman's right to vote remove gay marriage, um, you know, having a cap on how many immigrants can come in. I don't believe in civic nationalism, which to me is just follow the law. We're supposed to do that anyway. So I'm really on the right compared to him. So for him to get riots and people assaulted shows that, you know, we are in a place where the left has become unhinged totally, totally. And they need to be shut down. They need to be stopped. And I'm going to talk about how we're going to stop them. But before then, we have passed the point where we are rational human beings, where we can logically debate. We are past that. Now it's about raw power. Now it's about raw might. Whoever is stronger is going to win and strength comes in the form of, of power. It's no longer a marketplace of ideas. The best idea wins. We pass that. It's now who is going to crack the skull that kills the other person and achieves power first. I referenced earlier on the Ukrainian Maidan situation. It's that. It's whoever can sponsor, can shut it down. They're going to win. We don't need ideas anymore. You know, we don't talking isn't going to get us there. Now we need law and order. We need the people on the left and the police officers who didn't do any arrests, even though laws were broken. These people need to be held accountable. And I believe that Trump is the man to to do it. And we're so far gone. We're so far past arguments and logic that popular speaker, podcaster, Stefan Molyneux, he's on suicide watch. Take a look. God, I don't even want to say it. Um, 
Maybe the time for arguments is past. Maybe this battle has moved beyond words. Perhaps my job is over. The most logical man on the internet who is, you know, really rational man. Look at, did you see his face? He's, he's about to cry, man. This is what the left has done to this man. Um, you know, so we are, again, it's now it's about might and power, but we have to do it in a certain way. Now, before I get there, God, I have a lot of things that I have to say, but before I get there, I want to say why we shouldn't fight back yet. We shouldn't fight back because what the left is doing is basically a gaslight operation to act in a way to force the response that they want. The best example I can give you is a girlfriend who constantly accuses you of cheating or creeping on the side, even though you are not. So she's constantly telling you, Roosh, you're cheating on me. You're, you're, I know you were with that girl. And I'm like, what, bitch? I wasn't cheating. I wasn't. And she's doing it again and again. She's starting to emotionally drain you to the point you don't even want to be with her anymore. And then you meet some other girl who doesn't accuse you of false things. And you go with that girl. And then your girlfriend can say, ah, I knew it. You are a cheat. See, I knew it all along. But it's really her actions led you to this other girl's arms. So what the left is doing is the same thing. They're saying, you're a fascist, you're a Nazi, you're violent. And they're acting in a way to elicit what they're accusing you of. So they're going to bash you in the head with pipes as they call you a violent fascist. And then when you finally respond and start shooting them, and actually in a Milo Seattle talk, someone was shot. They're going to say, see, you're a fascist. I knew it. You are a Nazi. So this is the logic. Now, it's a feminine logic because this is something that women do. And so and it, and you can argue that the left is a feminine ideology. You know, it's a collectivist socialist ideology. It's based on a feminist feminine mentality. So this is what the left is doing is purely psychological projection. Okay, they want you to act in a way which confirms and validates what they already decided about you. Okay, and at this point, you can, if not fighting back, will at least eliminate that confirmation. But you can see that they are, they are so far gone. They're so far gone in their mentality and so far gone in just basically how they're acting like emotional children, emotional adult children, children in adult bodies, that there really isn't a way to stop this except through might. Might is the only way. And thank God, thank God we have the right guy that is going to stop it. How is he going to stop it? Okay, politically speak, now we're going to get into the dirty politics of it. It's better for Trump to wait until the left commits something that is perceived by a majority of Americans as a terrorist act. This may involve killing. This may involve people killing others. And I mean, people on the left, I think it will probably come out of the Black Lives Matter group. They're probably going to be the first ones to really... Uh, kill, I think. And then once this terrorist act by the left, and you can argue that what happened in Berkeley was a terrorist act too. But once that terrorist act happens, people, most of the, of the public will be outraged. And then they will beg Trump, Trump, do something about this, please. We need law and order again. And only then will Trump act once he has that public mandate. Once the left squeezes out all the goodwill that they had before committing this terrorist act. So if I was Trump, if I was a political advisor of Trump, I would say, just hold on a bit more. But you see what he's doing. He sent out a tweet. Trump sent out a tweet which brought attention to what happened to Milo. He's doing this because he wants people to see what's going on. He is red-pilling the masses 
without doing anything yet. And I know he has his hands full, but what he's going to do is wait, wait, wait for the terrorist act. Then he's going to crack down on skulls that is going to make you praise the Lord for what he is doing. But politically speaking, and I hate to look at human beings that could get hurt by the left as pawns in a political game. But you have to understand the risk if Trump moves now, if the Trump moves too soon before the left really commits this terrorism, you know, something that's that's maybe twice as big as what they did in Berkeley. If he moves too soon, he won't have the mandate. It could backfire on him in a spectacular way. So if I was the advisor for Donald Trump, I would tell him to wait, wait, wait until it gets really bad, then reply with the swiftness, with swift might that shuts it all down, that shuts them all down, that goes into the ranks, gets their sponsors, pulls all the nonprofit status of the NGOs and everything else, and goes all the way up to the top to Satan himself, George Soros, who is sponsoring this. And that's what I would do if I were him, because the answer is not us organizing groups, self-defense groups. The answer is law and order, and law and order must come from Trump himself. One thing, though, the local police, it's clear now, the local police will not protect you. Do not, if you are in the middle of an anti-faggot protest and there's local police right there, they ain't going to do shit. They're not going to do anything. Why? Because lo because many local localities in the coastal cities where a lot of these or blue states or excuse me blue cities where this is happening are run by democratic mayors and these mayors appoint who the police chief is so when an antifag protest goes on the police tell them to stand down or you know just uh, don't really get involved unless we absolutely have to so just do not count on the local police when it comes to an antifaggot riot because they're not going to keep you safe. I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. But, you know, it's weird how I was worried about Obama federalizing the police in some way, using Black Lives Matter as a reason to do it. But that may be needed in some way to stop this because the the corruption on the local scale is immense. So that's what I think of all that's been going on. I mean, it really is something that we have to wait a little bit more. I know a lot of people are, are angry. This is an injustice. This is wrong. This is, I mean, you'd, I mean, listen, I'm not going to say that it's so, I'm not going to say it's horrible to beat a woman just to score points right now, but it really, I mean, I'm the one who's supposed to be a monster. You know, I'm the pro-rape advocate. But the point is that, uh, you know, they are projecting what they do. So when they accuse you of rape, accuse you of violence, they're doing it. You know, they're accusing you of sexism. They're beating women. They're literally beating them. I've never done that. I swear, I've never hurt a woman. I am, I've never raped ever. I've, I've never done half the shit that these antifags are doing right now. So I think that, you know, whatever someone, whenever someone comes out and says, I hate this in your mind, you have to think mm, that person is probably doing it, you know, because when you are doing something wrong and consciously you cannot admit it, you cannot address it to relieve the guilt from doing that wrong thing, you attack someone else who is doing it too. So I firmly believe if you look into the psychology of these hard leftists, especially the antifaggots, this is it. You know, everything that they say they hate, they're trying to stop. They are doing it. And uh, but that doesn't help us as long as they're getting sponsorship from Soros and other NGOs. And as long as the local police are really selling out the people who are getting hurt. This is going to keep going on, but Trump has to wait and he has to wait until that moment when things are so bad, people are begging Trump, Trump, please, we can't, we can't have this anymore. People are getting killed out there. And then Trump is going to come down. I'm sure he already has a plan or is working on a plan on how he's going to crack down when there is that big push for a Ukrainian Maidan situation in the United States. And I believe that the left is going to try it uh, by the summer. So, oh, that's all I have to say about Milo. 
I hope I helped you understand this. And um, I have some links in the show notes which will help you understand things further. So thank you for watching and until next time. If you like this video and are concerned about the direction our culture is headed, check out my book, Free Speech Isn't Free. It decodes the agenda of the globalist establishment through an action-packed story of what happened when they tried to shut me down, and it shares tips to prevent you from being shut down as well. I've written over 15 books, but this is by far the most powerful. Other people call it a riveting first-hand story that is extremely well-written and engaging. By far the strongest book Roosh has written to date, highly recommend it. It's a great story told well, and you learn some solid lessons from a guy who has faced the full force of the social justice mob. If you want to fully understand how the system aims to harm you, order your copy of Free Speech Isn't Free today by going to Amazon.com and doing a search on Free Speech Isn't Free or by clicking the link below. After you read the book, be sure to drop me an email or comment to let me know what you think. Have a good one.